he does he he couldn't uh, recollect a graffiti writer that he knew that hadn't had either been stabbed or shot. It's true. Is that true? It's very true. I mean, uh, there, there's a few situations that I was encountered in, and you know, I mean, I've been shot at, I've been chased, I've been jumped. Um, you know, you name it. I mean, it, it's it was a huge part back then because again, predominantly most neighborhoods were ran by gangs, yeah. and graffiti artists were just like the sneaky little ninja that just sneaked in and did what they were going to do and get out. Yeah. So, you know, you creeping in somebody's neighborhood sometimes got you in some really bad situations. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Wakey wakey, sun's shining and everyone's smiling. Yeah, on Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central from Mind Drive Business for a second. Big shout out to everybody, the sharers and carers and people who've been following us from the jump. Hold tight to everyone's got the Kellervision app free download, iPhone, Android, for your street culture sports, whether it's mini docs, full docs, DJ mixes, or the notorious podcast, we got you. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, the mighty Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. We are not in the studio right now. We are out on location, Los Angeles, to be more precise. And we've got two characters from the UTIDOC camp holding it down from a graffiti point of view. Big shout out to Dust Calico, UTIDOC in the building. Right on, right on. How are you guys? Doing great, doing great. Good morning. Uh, excited to be here with you. So definitely a great day already. <laughs> it's a great day already. And what weather? I mean, considering it's winter, it's a surprise we're out here doing the thing we're doing right now, right? right? <laughs> uh, not really. No, I feel like December has just become like a summer day as well. So, I mean, it's always nice out. So, yeah. you know, summer... You know, we don't get too much winter anymore, so yeah. this is uh, always a great, <laughs> great weather day for us. Yeah, man, we were talking about going painting, weren't we, to be fair? That was, yeah. was going to be a thing, but it has been threatening a bit of, uh, bit of rain this weekend, hasn't it? Yes, and definitely if it's still sunny tomorrow, hey, we'll, we'll find a spot. Bada bing, bada. <laughs> Dude, it's so rare. I mean, for graph especially, the weather here is paramount. It's like... To have a rainy weekend is rare over here, isn't it? It's been pretty active in Los Angeles uh, in the last uh, couple of years, actually. It's, it's been big active. Gro- yeah. big, big growth uh, with a lot of different graffiti artists coming out now. Mm. Um, so I feel like where there hasn't, there was never a transit system like that over here. There were alternative ways of getting up, and obviously the freight culture was is, was a big deal, and like you say, rooftops and you know highways, but just done differently over here, huh? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, unfortunately, I haven't gotten the chance to make it to London. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> but uh, definitely a goal for next year. Um, but, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's for a while it was pretty dead. Um, now I feel that there's a lot of activity going on. Yeah. Mainly once you cross over from the valley section, you were coming from Thousand Oaks, which is yeah. not a lot of graph going over on that side of town. But, uh, you know, once you cross over to Los Angeles, uh, more deeper in from Hollywood, going deeper into L.A., it's definitely an active area. And this is, I think, I think it's really important at this point, particularly for the U.K., European, outside of town crew, get a geographical understanding of where graffiti is most prevalent. Um, around here, you know, I've seen a few bits and bobs, but I guess it's got a gentrified kind of feel to it being Hollywood, right? Yeah, definitely uh, Hollywood uh, has gentrified a, a, a whole bit. Um, yeah. So, like I said, it, it, as you move, though, south in, it uh, definitely you'll notice a huge difference. Uh, so, south into what the, the city, of, uh, Echo Parkway? More of downtown LA, more of like a uh, center part of it. Yeah. Uh, you know, e- e- even eastern LA. Uh, South LA, mm. uh, just moving all that way is definitely a lot, a lot of graph going on right now. So sick. Um, and for those who are watching not lis- and uh, uh, listening and not watching, uh, Calico, uh, young lady from uh, West Coast as well, who's actually your daughter. Yes, my daughter. Fantastic. Passing it on. 
dust, calico, do the generations, it's, uh, it's popping. How are you, dear? You good? I'm doing really good. I'm happy to be here. Yeah? Are you yeah. buzzing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it must be like watching your pops come through in Graf and the way he has. That must be completely inspirational, eye-opening, and just, you must have learned so much stuff growing up. Oh, definitely. It's, it's fun. I like hearing his stories and learning about it. Yeah, I bet the stories are pretty wild as well, right? Oh, most definitely. <laughs> For those that are listening and not watching, the face that his daughter just pulled <laughs> was priceless. <laughs> and we're going to get into them stories right now. Das, man, uh, let's get into the early days for you and where it all began. And give us a bit of a description of the landscape of graffiti at its time. Uh, at the time, uh, I was living in North Hollywood, which is right, is, uh, right over the side of uh, Hollywood area. Yeah. And, um, you know, I grew up in a gang culture. Um, you know, all my family are gang related uh, in, in some way, or shape or form. So that was my whole idea. Um, I'm going to give mad credit to my buddy Burl from DOC. Uh, he's the one that mainly introduced me to graffiti in itself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would see tags, but I was never really into it. Um, grew up with a hip hop culture, though, break dancing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as a young young lad just dancing in the way, but um, mainly Burrow is what brought it to light for me. Uh, I didn't want to be uh, trapped inside my own city uh, being in a gang culture at that time. So, I mean, I saw that as an outtake uh, for me to be like, oh man, this is something I'd rather do. Like I could be everywhere. I could go to every city, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know? And then as I grew up, I started to see other graffiti artists uh, you know, in the area, and that really changed my perspective of where I wanted to be. That's crazy. I mean, to, to have grown up in the gang culture like that, the way you had, and using graffiti, because, you know, gang-related graffiti is very much a part of the culture over here. Yeah, definitely. As well as the kind of Mexican-influenced graffiti as well, right? That, which is a huge yeah, um, the, scene. you know, calligraphy style yeah. and those kind of letter styles and, you know, handwriting. Mm -hmm. You know, they all played a huge part in graffiti itself still. Mm. So maybe I, maybe I make too much of a severe correlation between gang-related relate, activity here and graffiti, but I, got, I, I get the impression through conversating with people that um, it was only the authorities that kind of made the comparable of these two things being one and the same, when actual fact, hip-hop was giving people a voice and an opportunity, right? Yes, definitely. I mean, hip-hop has always given a different opportunity for, you know, I mean, now it's diverse. I mean, you know, of course, there's still gang culture in hip-hop now. Um, but at that time, there was hip-hop or like, you know, graffiti, hip-hop style, and there was still the gang culture. It was like two separate issues, you know, but, um, you know, now I feel they're a little coincide and mixed in there together. Yeah, man. Um you're busy at the moment, bro. You're out a lot. Uh, yeah, this year's been really active as well as last year. I think I'm up close to 50 pieces this year. Stop it. Yeah, and then, you know, that's just pieces, you know, little tags here and there and whatever else I can get in, I will, so. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, you have been really active. And big shout out to Ray, Downset, UTI crew. Again, you know, you it's, it's, it, it's family right there, for real. Um, do you... Do you feel like the opportunities in getting up are, after lockdown especially, yeah. there was a lot more f fruitfulness in the graph? Yeah, especially like in Los Angeles. I feel like police kind of, kind of fused down. So like a lot of people right now are even day bombing. I mean, they're like full on. You could probably drive on a freeway right now and see somebody doing some full on letters. Um, for real? Yeah, for reals. Like, I see it all the time. Like, I'm driving, I'm like, oh, there goes so-and-so. You know, it just, like, literally, you could see people full-on bombing daytime. Why is that, though? Why do you think the authorities have suddenly, like, chilled um, out on it a bit? There, there was some kind of a law situation where right now things are getting slapped on the wrist and pushed out the door. Right. Um, county system of jails are overcrowded and minor offenses like this are just getting pushed out of the way. Yeah. Um, so it's not even worth... Um, going through the whole process of it. Yeah. So a lot of people are just getting away with some tickets, a couple fines, and you yeah. know, let go. But you know what, though? Back in the day, and I do hold this to, to, to my prestigious memory of uh, 
you guys were getting heavy sentences yeah, for graft. I, like, no fucking around. You guys are in. Yeah. There was a at one point they were making it a felony, and I still believe it may be if it's like over a million dollars uh, of destruction yeah. that it could end up being a, a felony case and you could end up getting a big charge. But that's the thing is I think nobody's really uh, documenting every person that's out there right now. Yeah. Um, you know, if that's the case, there's a, probably a lot of people that would be doing some severe time because there's a lot of wrecking going on. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And coming from a, uh, a, 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 a plethora of different crews that you've, you've been hung, hanging out with or represented, DOC hold tight, of course, like you, it'd be really easy for the, the authorities to kind of pinpoint the crews if they everyone was as crazy active as they were intended to be they're spread out they're all over so they're you know i mean uh there's a lot of crews i mean shout out to stp man i mean they've killed every part of the city yeah man um, you know i mean uh heavy the, the, you know those are family guys as well that i've known since gosh the early 90s so yeah. You know, definitely, these guys have been killing the streets majorly. Give us some more crews that, for your for its time, had, uh, had you inspired and, and you coming up alongside? Uh, well, um, and right, coming up, um, you yeah. know, from the beginning, uh, it's always been UTI. Um, you know, there, there was a lot of influence within UTI in my neighborhood, mm. from Skill, Smurf, Master, Panic, uh, Dash, mm. you know, these guys were all like kind of in my area, um, so they were like huge influences to me. But there were also crews like TCF. There was a guy named Rage and K187, One Love. I mean, these guys were amazingly just up all around my area. So those were huge influences to me. But then again, I go to like uh, Whisk and Sir for killing freeways through mm -hmm. Hollywood and mm -hmm. stuff like that. You know, uh, Gin and Deuce. I mean, these guys, you know, were just mad killers on the freeway. Panic. Uh, you know, so those were guys that were doing major bombing on a level of like, oh shit, like I gotta be there. Yeah, yeah, and, <laughs> ag and again, utilizing these uh, these spaces and ways in which, you know, I hear Chicago. I mean, Chicago has always had the rooftop thing popping off. Again, working with their environments. Uh, everybody stayed pretty diverse in Los Angeles. I feel um, there's always, uh, you know, the crew. You would see them up on everything. You know, from productions to trains to hitting freeways to, mm. you know, there's always, and I think that's the thing is like with a lot of uh, crews in Los Angeles, they always stay diverse, mm. you know, always had somebody in some area or field of area. Like even when I entered in UTI, I was mainly in as a bomber. Mm. I wasn't in as a piecer. I didn't really even know how to piece Really? Well. So you, yeah, you I just was hitting streets all day long. That's all I did. Fuck. You know, so just bombing was my, you know, that was my thrill. Yeah, you yeah. know, I was... I just wanted to kill the streets, bomb buses, and you know whatever else I could get my hands on, and just cause some destruction. But um, as through the years, I mean, uh, you know, influenced by uh, some of these great masters in the crew, you know, I mean, yeah. you know, I, I've learned a great deal of letter structure and style and stuff. So, yeah, you've also you're really into the colors. You're into colors as well, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's fun. It's it's fun mixing the colors and blending them in, and you know, it, it, you know, and again, everything is. Uh, Evolving to me is I'm I'm a graffiti artist. I like to, I never like to go with a sketch. Mm. I want to just do whatever is on the top of my head at that moment mm -hmm. and just make it flow. In the best I love I that you don't use. I, I love that you don't sketch. That's something else, man. Like that's real patterning up. Like you just know yourself and you kind of just throw what you're yeah. thinking on the wall like that. Yeah, you know, if I feel like oh man, I gotta get a fast one in, I'm gonna go with something basic that I'm used to doing that I can yeah. knock off real quick. Yeah. If I'm like oh I got lots of time, then I'm gonna really get complicated and really play with it and see like what can I do with this piece yeah, yeah for so. real <laughs> <laughs> but Calico it's like your, your style it's more um, from a creative point an illustrative point of view isn't it like you, the art that you do yeah I'm more of like the character person yeah. I haven't really messed with letters just yet uh, we're yeah. hoping to soon yeah yeah but yeah I'm more of I don't really know how to do outlines so uh. I I enjoy working with Blending first, just mixing things up more rather than solid things. S solid things, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but that in itself is a skill set that, you know, if you've got a member of a crew that really focuses on that, then mm -hmm. I love well-rounded crews like that. 
You know, when someone's delegative to being a bomber, someone's delegative to being the, the, the photorealism character creator, and then there's the wild star dudes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I love yeah. that shit, you know? Maybe some of the, uh, some of the charm is that you don't do too, many le- too much lettering and you focus on the, the art. So you love it, right? Yes. It's that's a lot of fun, definitely. Yeah, that's the shit. Do you guys go out painting together? I'm sorry? Do you guys go out painting together? Paintings together? Yeah. Do well, that. almost everything we do is together. All together. All yeah. Together. So be, it started with mm, her doing my fill-ins. Mm-hmm. So she would just help me do fill-ins. She already knew how to paint, draw, and all that stuff. But I started letting her just do my fill-ins, and then she just developed the can control. And that just took off from there. And, you know, the inspiration from a lot of the DOC crew uh, pumped her up, I feel. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, she really just took on it and just was like, all right, now we're going. And it just... <laughs> went full steam and you know she surpassed me character wise hands down she's killing yeah, it man. killing she's it killing right it. killing it it's amazing isn't it like just being able to have can control if you've got the imagination that it unlocks a whole load of doors just the can control alone yeah, yeah. that must have thrown you when you all of a sudden just like because you're getting better and better and you're looking at it and you're thinking wow like I'm really developing here like what was that feeling like it was really amazing and it it didn't really hit me yet, like, because I was doing characters, but when I started to look back and started getting a little more recognition, it was like, oh, man, I'm really, like, progressing here from mm. the start. It felt really good to know that I was I was getting better mm. without really trying to. Yeah, yeah. Um, is there, young, is there a, young, a young generation passing, coming up through the ranks? Do, like, do your friends do it? Is there a, is there a culture for it in... In the, in the youth of, of now in, in the States? I feel like now there's not as much determination for it as there was when they were younger. Yeah. Like, they have the idea of it, but nobody's really pursuing it or, you know, going to try to reach that. It's a patience thing. I think people lack patience when it comes to really honing craft, don't they? It's a real shame because I think, especially with Instagram and stuff, you know, I mean, the reason why we're connected here is because through the internet, through the social media, we yeah. were able to really do that and see what each other's up to at any given time of the day. I mean, let's go back to the 90s where there really wasn't that. Graffiti was almost like today's SMS. It's yeah. The spreading of information. Yeah. In a viral way. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, gosh, back then it was like, it's either you put in, put in enough work that everyone saw it or you just didn't get recognized. And sometimes... You know, the, the walls at that time were, like, covered, too. Like, you'd, again, like, there's, like, 50 million tags. It's, like, trying to spot, oh, who's this guy? It was impossible, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's either you went big or you went home. It's just the way it was. And, yeah, yeah. you know, to get that recognition back then, as, you know, today you could post a couple pictures of pieces and stuff and get a huge, you know, uh, response from people. Back then it was, like, you could do 20 pieces and never be recognized. Really? Is yeah, that, was I mean, that hectic? So it, it, it was crazy hectic to get that recognition you know so back then i feel getting into a big crew was it it was a huge accomplishment Mm. because you really had to do the work to get recognized Mm. uh you know now i feel like oh well yeah everybody sees me Mm -hmm. you know i mean and and no offense to it i mean it's it's amazing it's amazing to me you know and uh but back then it was just a little bit more hard work Mm. you know it's a really push of the level of being in bad neighborhoods and doing some crazy way out shit. You know? yeah. Risk said something that intrigued me, that he said that there wasn't... He, does, he, he couldn't uh, recollect a graffiti writer that he knew that hadn't, had either been stabbed or shot. It's true. Is that true? It's very true. I mean, uh, there, there's a few situations that I was encountered in, and, you know, I mean, I've been shot at, I've been chased, I've been jumped... Um, you know, you name it. I mean, it, it's it was a huge part back then because, again, predominantly most neighborhoods were ran by gangs, yeah. and graffiti artists were just like the sneaky little ninja that just sneaked in and did what they were going to do and get out. Yeah. So you know, you creeping in somebody's neighborhood sometimes got you in some really bad situations. So uh, you know, you, like I said, I mean, I've I've been jumped. You know, trying to get out of neighborhoods. I've been 
you know, chased down. I've been shot at, and you know, I mean, thankfully, I've never been stabbed. But hey, yeah. you know what I mean, <laughs> there's uh, yeah, been yeah. some crazier situations too. So. Still a lot. There's still a lot going on there, bro. Like, I mean, <laughs> but that's part of the culture, like you say, and wrong. Would, would, would putting your name up in in the wrong neighborhood be uh, as uh, uh, what's the word? incriminating from the point of view of like the gang seeing you and recognizing that they'd be after you if they caught you um at that in the 90s it was lit in the earlier 90s it was a little bit separated um it turned into a crazy situation when tag banging became an issue mm. uh, basically it was taggers that were still in gang activity so mm -hmm. basically it was like taggers that were basically a gang mm -hmm. Um, so when it turned into that, that's when it became really serious and it became a really big problem because no matter what, whether you were from a gang or you were a tagger or a graffiti artist, you were still stuck in that same realm no matter what. Mm. Even if you just wanted to be a graffiti artist and just wanted to do graffiti, you were either, hey, you had to be the ninja and get in and get out with nobody seeing you or, you know, you, there's a strong chance either, hey, that tagging crew is going to catch up to you and who knows what or, mm. or the gang in the neighborhood or you know so it, it was always a threat uh, it was more risk and then you had the police as well so yeah you know you no matter what you were up against a lot of odds and it feels like you just yeah like you say it's it's a, it's more than just a a, a career choice. it's like not more than a career choice it's like you you literally had so many different things against you as a writer i, I hold that with such high praise because the felonies, the the, the 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 punishments were so severe as well because I guess they were looking at New York by example of well we don't want to be like that so we're gonna put zero zero tolerance on things. Yeah, and that didn't happen till like I would say the late nineties. Mm. Um, I think because everything was just written on, so I got to a point where I was like, okay, that's enough. Like mm. it, there's too much damage going on, uh, um, and then that's when the stiffer penalties started coming along. Right. So there was a downtime of. Yeah, a lot of the times, I mean, I'd gotten caught a couple times, slap on the wrist, and I was off to my parents or you know, family member that got me out or something like mm -hmm. that. But most of the time, it was really nothing. But they, if, you're, if your family was um, uh, uh, within the gang culture, would you coming back home with the police after graffiti, would that be comparable to them and their... Uh, at that point in time, most of my brothers had been in and out of prison their whole life. Right. Uh, you know, I, I was probably 13, maybe 12 when I first got caught. And it was kind of like a cheesy little thing. They just kind of police pick me up. Hey, yeah. tell your parents, come pick you up. Right. But at that point in time, my brothers had all been in and out of prison many of times. And you were the last of the ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was, I, what I was doing was minute to what they were doing. Yeah, so yeah. It, it was not of a surprise at this point, you know. And again, it was like my whole family. You know, my dad, borderline, uh, hung around with, like, biker gangs. And, uh, you know, my mom, she, she was a good mom. She worked and did her thing. But I, you know, most of the time, she was, you know, not always there as well. I, I stayed, uh, we mainly stayed with my grandmother yeah. uh, at the time. So, um, you know, grandma was a little old. We took advantage grandma. of her. Yeah, so. of course, man. <laughs> of course. Uh, biker culture. Another area of, of L.A. that I just love so much. And the low-ride culture as well. Yeah. Um, the, the gang culture, everything that I feel, in, in, it, it all injects into, into Graph over here in such an awesome way. Really unique and colourful characters and pieces that come out of the, all these cultures rolled into one, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's because a lot of, you know, especially guys myself, my age, yeah. um, you know, we grew up in that gang culture. So, you know, we put that now into our pieces or put it into murals that we do because those are things that we grew up seeing, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? From lowrider cars to the cholas with the looped hair and the, the cholos with the big zoot suits on or something, yeah. you know. So th those were cultures we seen growing up. So, I mean, that's something a lot of, you know... Uh, a Hispanic artist that may have grown up in those areas mm. will paint things like that. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know? the shit. That's yeah. the shit. Give us some stories. Give us some one of your craziest stories to recite on the podcast. Uh, I, I won't give a name of the gang, but one time, I, I think I was probably like 15 years old, I um, was like, you know what? My buddy didn't want to go writing with me, and I was like, fuck, I'm going to go by myself. So I jumped in the bus from the valley, came out here to Hollywood, 
And uh, I was like, I'm going to go hit me a freeway spot. Sure enough, I'm on the freeway and catching a spot. And I'm like, yeah, all right, I'm all done. I come up, and there's a whole gang right there. Now, there's probably like 10 guys or so. I don't know. They're just surrounding me now. And I'm like, oh, shit. So they're hitting me up. Where are you from? You know, and, and I was like, oh, no, no. You know, I'm, I'm not from nowhere. And sure enough, they were like, oh, like, I was like, give me the pass. You know, let me, let me get out of here. And they're all like, one of them was like, well, hit up our neighborhood and, and we'll, you know, we'll give you the pass. So sure enough, I uh, took two of the guys with me. We jumped back over the fence. We got on the freeway. I rocked a big old... You know, their, their neighborhood's yeah. uh, initials, and I hit them all up, came back over, and they were like, yeah, 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 man, he's good, man, he did it, and this and that. And, you know, the younger ones that went with me were like, yeah, let's jump them in. I was like, whoa, dude, I'm all, give me yeah, the yeah, pass, yeah, yeah. give me the pass. And sure enough, <laughs> yeah. and the, one of the older guys was like, man, give him the pass. And I just I just split as fast as I could, man. It, it was it was a crazy scene, you know, because that was pretty intense. They 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 could have jacked me up pretty bad right there. Yeah, they could have got you big yeah, time. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, I just went with the flow, and it was cool, you know, I mean, it is what it is, and I had fun. But, I mean, there's, with the UTIs, man, when, when I got in UTI, I was only 17. These guys were all over 21 at that point in time. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I was yeah, getting yeah. drug into bars, you know, crazy, uh, you know, with down set, you know, going yep. to their sets Hold and stuff, down. man. I mean, Ooh, you know, in the mosh pit, getting binged in the nose by these yeah. big giant guys. Man, yeah, I'm yeah. 17. I shouldn't even be in this place, you know, but sure enough, I got in and, you know, we, we would do some way out shit. I mean, we were always doing something crazy out there and, you know, from bombing all night to crazy parties and, you know, shootings at these parties and, you know, just having Dude. a good old time, so. Well, life to live. Is that so? How did you get into you know UTI at the time? Like how how did that how did that all come uh, about? That's another crazy story. Um, Smurf actually got me in, and uh, I, I only knew him as. So I used to be from another crew called KNL, which was Kings and Lords, and uh, you know we, we all kind of it's like basically it was not really a trap house, but borderline a trap house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But, uh, you know, we all, <laughs> we all hung out there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Smurf was living there at the time. But I was only introduced to him as uh, I didn't really know him. So I was hanging out with him all the time. And, yeah. um, you know, one day finally he's like, let me see your marker. Like, we're on a bus bus ride and he, like, catches the tag. Smurf, UTI. And I'm like, what the hell, man? I've been hanging out with you all this time. Oh, God, I love that Yeah, so, happens. like, you know, the whole time I'm hanging out with him, I had no clue he was from UTI. And uh, finally, like, he's like, yeah, you know, I'm Smurf, UTI. Like, so he hit me up, hit himself up. And then from there, we just got really close. And uh, he ended up uh, taking me to a meeting and they put me in. That's fucking genius. I love it when yeah, that shit it, it was crazy. It, 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 was, it was a wild, wild crazy. The bad thing is, like, a lot of people, they had just came out of a lock from UTI. And um, it, it, a lot of people didn't believe that I was actually in. So there was a good portion of people that were slashing me and putting dick rider and jock and stuff like that and then when it came to find out that i was in they were like oh how do i get in oh you know, well, you know really you get me in you know so it turned into a different situation at that point but you know what i mean i appreciate it, you it, addressing that though on the podcast because you know obviously that was a part of time that that happened and um perhaps people still have that in recollection so it's good that it's addressed yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's good. I mean, they'll deny it to the day, but <laughs> it's, it's okay. I you mean, know who you right. are. <laughs> yeah, who you are. No, but it's, it's all good. You know what I'm saying? I have no hard feelings to anybody. You know what I'm saying? I, I just do what I do, and, you know, it's either you with me or you're not. You yeah, know, yeah, that's yeah. the way it goes. And, yeah. And DOC, do you like, that was your, that's been your longstanding crew from the jump. Like, Yeah, actually, that was uh, what got me started. Yeah. I mean, 89, late 89, I think, uh, you know, that was uh, my time that I got in. And again, uh, I didn't even really know how to write. It wasn't that great. I, I sucked, actually. But, uh, you know, Burl gave me a chance. And I told him, look, man, I, I, I won't let you down. I'm going to stay a graffiti artist forever. You know, at that point in time, I realized that's yes. who I'm going to be. There's no if, ands, or buts. Yeah, yeah, you are doing yeah, this. Yeah, so, I mean, I stayed solid for the most part. You know, I, for the most part, I've stayed active all the time. Uh, there has been some years that I took downtime uh, just to live life. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, I come back, I'll hit it hard, mm-hmm. disappear for a couple of years, and then come back and hit it hard again, and, well, here I am. Yeah, know, so yeah, yeah, and last, you have been hit again just to, yeah, you last last year alone, you've, you've really been hammering it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just now, I mean, 
No, it's you. I, I'm a character person, so, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so it's all hooked up. Everything happening for a reason in yeah. simulation. So, I mean, and DLC is uh, coming back uh, even stronger than ever this year. Um, you know, a lot of them are really pushing hard this year. You know, and we got people all over Germany, yeah, Italy, yeah, don't, don't. Um, you know, as well as uh, Las Vegas, you know, all through the States as well. So, so sick. You know, we're all spread out. So, you know, hopefully uh, I'll be making a lot more presence out your guys' way. Come on, guy. Uh, yeah. You know, because I definitely, <laughs> definitely want to get, want to get across over there. There's aspects of graph which you wouldn't want to see your, your kid go through. Of course. I does mean, that I, does that play on the mind at all? Can yeah, I definitely. I mean, I don't want her to be a bomber, but at the same time, <laughs> I, I can't give her street credit without doing some sort of illegal, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't put her in this category of you're a street artist. You know what I'm saying? Because that bothers me. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm a graffiti artist. and it, it, Some it's, core principles, yeah, like the fine line. So, I mean, so far she has done a few run-ups with me. Yeah. You know, we've just, they're not legal. They're yeah. Not illegal. Yeah. They're just kind of tolerated. In the air. Like, yeah, terminology. Just tolerated. You know, yeah. I mean, if you own a spot, you know, there's not much people will do. They're just going to be like, oh yeah, that, that's normal. Yeah. You know, so I mean, and, and that happens a lot in Los Angeles now. We just own spots. You know, like we just go up and start painting it like if it was ours or like we had permission and um, not anybody could say. And yeah. if it looks nice, at the end of the day, it's like, oh, yeah. I just got a free mural. Yeah, yeah, totally. You could be going over some tags or bombs and stuff, and like even if you do a shutter or something, like you say. If it looks great, nine times out of ten, people are chilled with it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's the same in London oh, at the moment. Nice. It's the same in London. I think it's, I think it's an attitude that's reflected in a lot of cities at the moment. Yeah, and so like I mean, sometimes saying, it's better to see. You know, what I mean, instead of just seeing scribbling on the wall or you know just some gray wall or beige yeah. wall, it's like yeah. man to see some art, some color, something yeah. like different. It's like. Oh, it's great. You yeah. Know, it's, it's really great. But the street art thing is, uh, is, is such a wide debate within graph. Yeah. And I get it. I understand definitely. it. You know, I respect it 100%. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it, it'll always be that difference. You know what I mean? Yeah. Saying there's always going to be that separation, or at least in my eyes. You know, um, again, I grew up yeah. at an old school time, so of course I'm going to see it that way. But, you know what I mean? I respect them 100%. There's amazing artists, amazing street artists. Yeah. You know, hands down. I mean, great skills i mean you know but i mean it, it for me respect level is when you're in the street yeah. you know is going through those situations going through those hard times yeah. you know being you know borderline i was homeless for a little while you know what i'm saying so struggles like that um you know that some of them you know street artists may have never endured mm -hmm. um is is part of what being a graffiti artist is yeah, is, yeah. You know, that hand style the, you know the letters the let Letter structures and yeah. stuff like that. I mean, those those are key elements of what I feel gra uh, graffiti was based upon. Yeah, um, you know, those are I, the core cool principles that a lot. It's it, it's about that respect, and I think some of the debate with the street artists is that they they kind of come on at a time where they haven't got to make those kind of moves and the groundwork that graffiti writers have had to do, and I, I guess they're stabilizing themselves within the cool kudos of the creation the, of the work that you guys put in yeah definitely I, yeah. you know i mean that's me putting it nicely yeah <laughs> <laughs> i could see the face there of like yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean you know it, it it's now such an open market for artists to just jump in there and use aerosol as their media mm. you know i mean where yeah paintbrush was the huge thing to, you know, go, you get your paintbrush, your rollers, or whatever yeah, yeah. needed to do a large piece. Now you could use aerosol to get that nice details of, <laughs> or highlighted areas that help that piece or production or whatever it may be look that much better, mm. you know. But, you know, that categorize of being, you know, putting street artists with graffiti artists didn't really necessarily come from street artists or graffiti artists. It was just more of people that, looked at it mm. as well he's using a spray can so he's a graffiti artist mm. you know but it, I feel the element came from still like there's a difference um, yeah. you know when you're in the street yeah there really is a difference yeah and I think that's why for you guys as a collaborators together is dope because you get that you know sweet with hard you know I'm sure there's comparables of people that are street artists and graffiti writers that have collaborated together. I dare say it will may that continue as well. But when you get the combination 
of a family here combining. It's, it's, it's music, it's music to, to the eye, you know, because you, there's a relationship within that. There's a dance within it, right? Yeah, definitely. I feel like it is. I mean, you know, we joke around the whole time, like, you know, and sometimes it's hard times. I mean, we, we're like, we got to go. Come on, like, let's get it done. Hurry up. Like, you know, like even like in St. Louis, we were out there painting. I mean, like it just poured the whole day. So, you know, we, we put aside an extra day to just wander and be tourists, but we couldn't. So it came down to like, down to the wire. Hurry up, you gotta get this done, you gotta get this done, you gotta get this done. And uh, Ayla too, uh, you know, she, she's another part of our team, you know what I mean? Basically us three the whole year have been pounding out yeah. most of the little mini productions. I mean, we're nine in together, yeah. uh, little mini productions, you know, so. God, that's good. Yeah, so I mean, and this is full on, each one of us doing a character, background, letters, uh, the full on, you know, we same color scheme, um, you know, theme, if we, if, come with the yeah. theme then you know that's just something we all been pushing this year so yes. i mean it, it's it's been a fun task but yeah. i mean it, you know for us it's been rough and sometimes and some days it's just fine it's just yeah, you know yeah. i mean enjoyable hangout and I just you know, love get it. to I love the, the, the family vibe of it all it's killing me. <laughs> it's so wholesome and chill you know love it love it um and america uh it's it's so rich in production value with with their pieces they do full-scale burners with people doing backgrounds and all sorts of stuff it just makes sense that you have that on your side you have that in your back pocket that you can go and do a full production just on your own <laughs> weather permitting you know yeah yeah well weather permitting. <laughs> and i mean that's the thing is i i personally missed it um you know a lot of la i think feel i feel I was just seeing a lot of people doing walls, but everybody doing their own color or mm. doing just them. Yeah. You know, um, that's why with uh, Ayla, myself, and uh, my daughter, we, I feel like I wanted to bring something more to the table than just our names yeah. doing whatever. I wanted us to see a scene. Mm. I, wanted to see, I wanted to see old productions yeah. um, you know, before you know, almost every crew landed productions before. Yeah. You know what I mean? full-on color schemes and everything like that. So, I mean, I like to see that. To me, I feel like it's visually uh, appealing uh, when you drive by it. You're like, ooh, yeah. look at oh, look at all the same <laughs> color scheme. Don't we like, all love that, Look man. at those characters. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, it's just like a wow effect to yeah. me. You know, where you see other ones, you're like, oh, yeah, oh, oh, he's up on there. Oh, yeah, he's up on there. Oh, that's yeah. cool. You know, it just visually don't do nothing It doesn't engage with you. And yeah. like you say, you come from the school of there was nothing but tags and you had to get up, you had to make yourself announced. Yeah. So there is still that in you and the scene still has to have that. Yeah, definitely. I, I it Definitely, I feel like it should be that way still. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, you know, I mean, it, things change and mm. a lot of people are individuals now. You know what I mean? Even though, uh, you know, they belong to crews, I feel like they're still... For themselves, mm. you know, it's not you know crews. Now I feel are building back together, being unity and united, uh, you know, uh, it, it, in making the effort to be a team now. Um, you know, there are some that are been doing it for a few years that stay strong and mm. been hammering out some really cool stuff. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, again, shout out to CBSs. I mean, yeah. they've really been doing some really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I get to see them at a lot of the events and stuff. Big up CBS, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's beautiful. It's just amazing to be on the ground here and just with all this rich history and activity, just to get these conversations in. Uh, you know, just stoked. I'm stoked. And I'm stoked that you're, you guys have passed through, man. Well, thank, you, thank you, man. I mean, it, it's a privilege to be here with you. You know what I mean? Honestly, it is. Yeah. So that's really cool. Well, we'll be back uh, again soon, man. And yeah, we have to do some painting. Yeah, yes. definitely. Anytime you're in LA, hit me up. I mean, we'll get something definitely popping off. My brother. We, we, we even set up a full production, let you come in with the color scheme and just drop Ooh. your name right in. Oh, my God. Yeah, we'll just make this one real easy for <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> <laughs> I just walk him, the bag set up, the, the ladder's there. Yeah, it's you, like, Man, the English paint break. will be ready for you. You, <laughs> just gotta, you just got to show up. <laughs> yeah. I got you, man. With, a, with a cup of English tea as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Straight off the bat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, without question, it's been awesome. Big shout out to Das Calico, U-T-I-D-O-C in the building. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Killer Keller podcast, out like in was out of fashion. You know what I do? Sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Crime don't pay, but neither do they, all right? Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people. Peace, guys. Peace. Peace. Peace.
Yeah, right on. That was so cool. Thank you, thank you, man.